I came across this quote the other day and it said, simplicity is about subtracting the obvious and adding the meaningful. And I thought that was just the perfect message for those of us who want a better and simpler life in 2024. A lot of us tend to focus on what more we need to do, which just ends up adding to our stress and overwhelm. So here's a gentle reminder that sometimes it's not about what you add, but about what you let go of or say no to that makes the biggest impact. So keeping that in mind, today I wanted to share a list of 24 things I'm not buying in 2024, either because I already own them or I think they're not worth the money or even because I've done the math and I think that they would subtract more than they add to my life. I feel like this is so important for us now more than ever because we recently moved back to the USA and we're saving money to buy a new home. So it's essential for us to be super intentional with our spending. Because the less stuff that we buy, the more money that we'll have to put towards that goal and the other things that matter most to us. And as we go through this list, please remember that value and worth are subjective. And just because I've decided not to buy or own something doesn't mean that you need to feel pressured to do the same. And I'd love to hear your thoughts about this list and what kinds of things you are planning to buy or not buy in 2024. So make sure to share your thoughts and ideas with me down in the comment section below this video and let's jump right in. Number one on this list of things I'm not buying in 2024 is a tiny house. Like I said before, our family is currently on the hunt for a new home and one of the things on my wish list for our future home is more square footage. As a minimalist, I have to say that it is a little bit funny to me how it seems like minimalism equals tiny home in a lot of people's minds. And the quote I always go back to to explain minimalism to non-minimalists is this one by Joshua Becker, which states, minimalism is the intentional promotion of the things we most value and the removal of everything that distracts us from it. So for some people that might mean downsizing and living in a tiny home, but for others, that's not their ideal lifestyle at all. I do think the tiny house movement is cool and I'm always impressed by people who live in vans or tiny homes and how creative they are with their space and storage. But for me personally, I know that I would feel a bit too claustrophobic living in a tiny house, especially with two high energy young boys in the four season climate of Chicago where the winters and snow can stretch on and on and on. Right now we are renting an 1800 square foot townhouse that has three bedrooms and 2.5 baths. And even though we just downsized slightly from a four bedroom and two bathroom flat that was just around 2000 square feet in size, I have to say this place feels a lot more cramped. And I'm looking forward to finding a home where we have more space to spread out and the boys have more room to play. And maybe even a yard, which is something that we've never had before, but it also leads me to number two on this list, which is that we don't want to buy a house with too much land. So we've been touring houses and we went to one recently that was five acres of land and it had a pool and a garden and all of this space and like really cool wildlife just walking around. And my husband and I were talking about all the things that we would do if we had so much land. Like my husband was saying, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have chickens and we're gonna raise chickens and we're gonna get eggs and it's gonna be awesome. As a side note here, have you noticed how popular homesteading videos are on like YouTube and Instagram when it comes to like the simple living topic? It feels like almost everyone wants to have these huge plots of land and raise chickens and goats and grow their own vegetables and things. And it feels like really aspirational and you start to think maybe that could be me. Ty, you don't have time to change, but you could hit a few balls in those clothes. She could be a farmer in those clothes. <laughs> But when my husband and I started talking more and more about how we would manage the day-to-day -day maintenance of the land and all of the costs that would go into it, we realized quickly that it was just too much land for us to handle. And the realtor actually sent us a sheet that had a breakdown of all of the costs and renovations. And we realized that they had spent $48,000 just to clear some brush and some scrubs and like small trees off of this one small portion of the land. And that number was just like crazy to us. So I think when you think about how much money and time need to go into maintenance and caring for and doing all of the things that you would need to do for all of this land and the garden and the pool and everything else, we just weren't willing to invest that kind of money and time into something like that. 
I think the takeaway lesson here is that if you're thinking of buying a home, you really need to weigh the pros and cons and get really, really real with yourself about what you are and are not willing to do. Like some people might love gardening and all of that hands-on housework, but for my husband and I who have lived our lives in low maintenance mode and have not done any significant gardening or yard work or anything, that was a little bit beyond our level of comfort. I think we could probably do up to one acre, but beyond that is probably just too much for us. And if you're interested in following along with our house hunting journey and all of the things that we're doing to help save money towards buying a house and what we end up with and how we end up decorating it, make sure to go down and hit the little red subscribe button and ring the bell to turn on all notifications so that you don't miss any of the weekly videos that I share here on my channel to teach you the A to Z of how to simplify your way to a life you love. Now on to the next item on this list, which is gray home decor. I feel like gray home decor is super popular and minimalist home decor and it's all over Instagram. Like every account that I see that has a minimalist home, almost all of them have gray home decor. And I am personally missing having warmth and like warm wood and warm colors in my home because our house that we're renting right now is furnished it's not our furniture and the decor that they have is very, very gray. So when we finally do find a home and we start to decorate that home, I'm definitely going to be going for a more warm minimalism style, like I said, warm woods and warmer colors and textures. Like in our old house, we had this leather cognac couch that was from Ikea that we loved and we miss it so much. So I'm definitely not going to be buying into this gray home decor trend that I see particularly on Instagram with a lot of minimalist lifestyle accounts. Speaking Speaking of couches, number four on this list of things I'm not buying is cushions and throw pillows. And when I say cushions, what I mean by this is I don't want to buy couches or armchairs that have detachable cushions that you can like take off because I have found that we have on our couch right now detachable cushions in the back and my boys will like take them off and throw them around and be hitting each other with it and just having too many of those kinds of cushions and throw pillows can start to get really messy because they get thrown around a lot and then we have to be picking them up all the time so I really liked having a couch where the cushions were attached on the back and they couldn't be removed and just having maybe one pillow on each end or maybe even two, but not a lot. I'm definitely not someone who wants to have a lot of throw pillows and I don't change them out by season. So that's not something I'm going to be buying in 2024. Number five on this list might be a little bit controversial and that is short term decor and storage solutions. And the reason that I think that this might be a little bit controversial is because I do get that when people move into a home, even if it's a short-term rental that they feel like they want to feel cozy in the space and they want to buy things to decorate that space. I've even seen this trend going around on TikTok and Instagram where a woman is decorating her home and she's saying that it doesn't matter how long she's going to be there, she's still going to make it feel like a home. One thing about me, I'm going to make my house a home. I don't care if I'm here for one year or for five. I refuse to wait to enjoy my own space and the girls that get it get it. I do get where these people are coming from. However, as a minimalist, I do not like to buy short-term home decor and storage solutions. And this might be different if we were longer term renters who were planning on being in this apartment for years at a time, but we know that we're going to buy a house. So I'm okay with not having things perfect because that's gonna save me time, money, and energy in the long run because I'm not running around buying too much stuff for this one house and then having to get rid of it and rebuy because it doesn't fit the new house. And a side bonus of this is that we also save money on owning less because it means that we don't need to rent a moving van or movers to help us move all of our stuff because at this point we have so little that it can just fit in our cars. I would love it if we could normalize not feeling like we have to rush out and spend a ton of money to buy a bunch of things to fill up our homes just to make them feel cozy. 
because more often than not, we just get into this hamster wheel of buying things to beautify our home or because we think they'll solve all of our problems. But then once the dopamine wears off, nine times out of 10, those impulse purchases didn't end up solving our problems, but only added to them. Because now not only do we have less money, but we also have more stuff cluttering up our home. I know that one of my biggest aha moments was realizing that having too much stuff in my home wasn't adding joy or value to my life. It was subtracting from it. And once I understood that, I started getting rid of all of the stuff that didn't matter so I could create more space for the things that did. And I know that decluttering is hard and it can be so overwhelming and stressful to get started and stay motivated, which is why I wanted to let you know that I've created an amazing decluttering course called Clutter GPS that's going to walk you through the A to Z of decluttering your home and give you the knowledge and skills that it takes to keep it clutter free for good. I share a lot of good tips and hacks for decluttering and simplifying on my A to Zen Life channel, but there's something so powerful about having a step-by-step -step roadmap that tells you where you need to go on each next step of your decluttering journey. And that's exactly what Clutter GPS does. So if decluttering your home is one of your big goals for 2024, make sure to sign up for the wait list so that you are among the first in line when the doors open for enrollment on December 31st, because there are going to be some surprises and early bird discounts that you don't wanna miss out on. This is the course that I wish I had back when I first started decluttering and I can't wait to see how much we accomplish when you sign up for this course. I'll also share a link down below with more details about what's included in the course and some amazing before and after results from past students. So definitely check it out if you want to give yourself the gift of a decluttered and simplified home next year. Number six on this list of things I'm not buying this year is a weight scale. So I have gained weight a little bit more weight than is usual for me because my weight does tend to fluctuate up and down. But I think with the stress of the move and getting settled into a new home and getting the boys adjusted to school. And then also there was one point where we thought we were gonna get evicted from our apartment, which was really, really fun. And I'll link that video up here for you if you're interested to find out more about that. But basically, after all of this, my weight has been creeping up and I only know this because my clothes are fitting tighter than they used to and I mean I can see it in the mirror too but I bought myself a scale in our old home in 2020 and it didn't help me lose weight at all and in fact my weight has just kind of slowly been creeping up since then I also turned 40 so I think that your metabolism just like naturally slows down at that time so I have been seeing my weight going up I'm not gonna buy a scale I'm just gonna focus on how my clothes fit fit me and how I feel instead of getting fixated on a number on a scale, which goes hand in hand with number seven on this list, which is that I'm not going to be buying any dieting products in the new year. I used to be someone who had a very unhealthy obsession with their weight back in college. And back then I struggled with binge eating, which I've spoken about before here on my channel. I would yo-yo diet because I would see my weight going up and then I'd do some kind of crazy diet and then it would go down and then I'd have some kind of relapse and I'd start binging again and then the weight would be going back up and it was just this cycle of overeating and losing weight and overeating and losing weight. I eat because I'm unhappy. I'm unhappy because I eat. It's a vicious cycle. And I think that when you are in a cycle like that, it can be very tempting to hear these promises from dieting products that say, we're gonna solve all of your problems. But when it comes to eating healthy and being at a healthy weight, there's no gimmick that's gonna work. It's just calories in, calories out. It's just healthy eating and moderate exercise. So I'm not gonna be buying into any of the trendy dieting products or things that you see. So like I said, I'm just going to be prioritizing healthy eating and exercise over gimmicks. Number eight on this list is hair dye. So that's something else that I noticed when I turned 40 is that I've started seeing a lot more gray in my hair and I have decided that I'm just gonna take a wait and see approach. So I'm not gonna say that I will never dye my hair because I think it really depends on your the tone of your skin and the tone of your hair and how the gray comes out once the color fades out of it. So I'm not saying that I'll never buy hair dye, but I'm gonna wait and see what it looks like before I take that action. I think some people look 
amazing with gray hair. I see them all over social media, like entire Instagram accounts devoted to people going gray and silver sisters, but I'm just not sure if I'm going to look good enough that I feel good enough to continue that lifestyle because it is like a whole lifestyle. It's a choice and I admire people who make that choice. For 2024, I'm taking the wait and see approach. Number nine on this list is hair tools. I keep the amount of hair tools that I own super, super simple. Like aside from shampoo and conditioner, I don't use any products in my hair like mousses or sprays or anything like that. And as far as hair tools, I have a flat brush. I have a hair dryer and a round brush that I use to kind of curl my hair under. I think that's it. Oh, sometimes I do use my bathrobe when I want curly hair, but all of the curly hair gimmicks that I've tried in the past never really worked out as well as just simply rolling my hair into a bathrobe, which is super easy to do. And it's one of the most comfortable ways to sleep if you want like sleep in curls. Number 10 is kind of a funny one and that's rubber bands. And I just wanted to kind of throw this out there because I think that this is something that a lot of people in the zero waste and the frugal community do that maybe other people don't think about too much. It's you don't really need to go out and buy packs and packs of rubber bands because a lot of the time you can just salvage rubber bands that come on like your fruits or your vegetables and repurpose those for use in the kitchen. But I haven't bought rubber bands in, I don't know, 10 years or more, and I will continue not to buy them going forward. Number 11 on this list is pets. And I think that this probably is going to be a really controversial one too, because I know a lot of people who have pets just adore their pets. They are like your family members. I remember because when I was growing up, we always had pets. We had cats, we had dogs, we had rabbits. We had a hedgehog at one point. My dad had cockatoos and parrots and all sorts of things. We were like the pet family. And now that we've moved back here and we're talking about having a house with a yard, my kids have started asking if they could maybe have a pet, like a cat or a dog. But one of the considerations is that since we moved back here, our kids have been having a lot more problems with allergies. And so we had to do a whole testing where they did like 54 scratches on their back. And we come to find out that one of them has a dog allergy and one of them has a cat allergy. So just from an allergy standpoint, it doesn't make sense for us to have pets in our homes. And something else that's a big consideration for us is we want to travel more often. So we want to travel more, but having a pet makes that more difficult. And there's just a lot of extra expenses and care that goes into having a pet that is not something we want to invest in right now. Number 12 on this list is smart phones for kids. My 10 year old has been asking for a phone for a while now. And this started actually back when we were in Germany, because in Germany, a lot of the kids are way more independent than they are here in the USA. Like in Germany, you'll see five and six year olds taking the bus taking the trains to school or and walking to school by themselves. And a lot of times because they're so independent and they're out on the streets by themselves, their parents will give them cell phones so that they can check in and say they made it to school or that they're on their way home. So his friends back there had smartphones early. And then now in the U S a lot of his classmates already have smartphones, but I was speaking to his pediatrician about it. And I asked doctor, what age do you recommend that kids should have smartphones? And he says, he says, no, no younger than 16. And I actually found a study from 2018 where they found a correlation between increased screen usage and behavioral issues in kids. So as parents, we have decided that we're not going to give our kids smartphones this year and probably not for a few years going forward. Definitely drop me a comment below and let me know your thoughts on smartphone usage and kids. What age do you think kids should have smartphones? I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. Number 13 on this list is dollar store goods. Dollar stores are super popular in the US. Not only do you have the dollar store, but you have the Dollar Tree, and then you have stores like Five Below, where everything is supposed to be below $5. But I have found that the stuff that I can get from the dollar store tends to be low quality and very cheaply made and tends to break easily. And I know there's like a whole niche on YouTube in particular, where people like try to do dollar store organization and dollar store hack videos and decorate their home using only things that they bought at the dollar store. 
But if I'm going to try to save money, I would rather go to a thrift store and shop secondhand or use something like a buy nothing group or a Facebook marketplace instead of shopping at the dollar store. And I think that a lot of creators on YouTube have started moving away from dollar store shopping and trying to be more sustainable. Like there is one YouTube channel that's called The Sorry Girls. They made a video called Why We Had to Stop Making Dollar Store Videos. And I think that that's a really good video if you want to watch their explanation as to why they don't shop dollar stores anymore. I will link that down below for you as well. I'm not trying to say like I'm Miss Perfect and I only shop thrift stores stores and buy secondhand. I still go to stores like Target and Costco and occasionally buy things from Amazon when I can't find it anywhere else, but I have decided that I won't be going to dollar stores going forward. Number 14 on this list is chairs with upholstery. Like I said before, we are currently in a furnished rental and the dining room chairs that came with this furnished rental are upholstered. They have like this bluish gray upholstery on them and I'm just finding it so much much more difficult to keep them clean with small children. Back when we lived in Berlin, we had these wonderful chairs that were made out of plastic that were really easy to like brush the crumbs off and wipe clean if they spill spaghetti sauce on them. But with upholstery chairs, it's a lot more difficult to keep them looking fresh and clean. So I can definitely say going forward, when we are looking for chairs and dining room chairs for our new home, I will not be buying chairs with upholstery on them. The 15th thing I'm not buying in 2024 on this list is jewelry. This is a really interesting one because I've noticed that I've been getting a lot of emails in December from brands, from jewelry brands wanting to work with me to do a sponsored video with them to share their jewelry. I'm just not someone who wears a lot of jewelry. I keep my jewelry super super simple like on a day-to-day -day basis all I wear is my wedding band and my mom's wedding ring that is the diamond ring on my hand although I do have some jewelry that I have in a jewelry box I actually left that back in Germany until we could find our forever home here. So because I didn't really know if I was gonna have a place for it wherever we ended up here and I wanted to keep it safe. So I do have some like necklaces and other things that are sentimental and meaningful to me back in that jewelry box. But on a day-to-day -day basis, I just, you know, have these rings and that's all I wear. So I'm not looking to buy any more jewelry in the next year. Number 16 on this list is cardboard boxes. So like I said, we're looking for a home and we're going to need cardboard boxes probably when we move because when we moved in here, we did have to buy some things like appliances, like a rice cooker that I got and some other things for our home. So we will have to have some boxes to move that from this rental to our home but I don't need to go out and buy cardboard boxes because first of all, I've been saving the cardboard boxes as we've got them so that I don't have to go out and look for other ones. But if you're trying to move your home and you need boxes, do not pay for boxes. There are so many ways to get boxes for free. Like back when I worked at the grocery store, we had a lot of college kids in the area and they would come in and ask us for boxes and we were happy to give them some of the boxes that we had from the shipments at the grocery store. And another great place to get free boxes is Michael's Craft Store because they have boxes of like all different shapes and sizes. Sometimes you can even find the cool round ones. Like if you have to roll up a painting or a canvas or something. So if you are needing boxes ever, do not pay for them. This is something that you can get for free at places like grocery stores, craft stores, you know, just the stores in your area. Number 17 on this list is water bottles. So it is an ongoing goal for me every single year to drink more water. Every single year, I make it a goal to drink more water in the new year. And every single year, I do pretty badly with that goal, to be honest. Because I'm someone who doesn't feel thirsty throughout the day. Like I will feel hungry, but rarely ever thirsty. So it doesn't come up into my mind to go and drink a glass of water. And so I just won't do it and then I get to the end of the day and I realize I haven't drank anything other than tea. So, but I finally found a water bottle that helps me drink more water and is so functional. I love it. It's the Yeti Rambler. I've shared it in other videos before and I love this one because I can put my cold drinks in it so I can put water in there and keep it somewhere visible so I'm reminded to drink water throughout the day and I can also put my hot beverages in there like if I want a cup of hot tea on the go. That has been really, 
really helpful in getting my water consumption up already. And so going into the new year, I think this is gonna be the first time ever that I am successful with my goal to drink more water. Number 18 on this list is cable TV. We haven't paid for cable TV in like, since we moved out of our Chicago house because it was bundled into our HOA fees there. That was in 2015. So now that's gonna be like going on eight years now, which is crazy. So we haven't paid for cable TV since then and we're going to continue not paying for it going forward. Number 19 on this list is impulsive thrift store fines. I have to say that I am so excited being back in the USA because it means that I can get more into thrift shopping. I, for some reason, just found that the thrift stores in my area in Europe were just like completely lacking compared to the stores in the USA, which is kind of surprising given that Europeans seem to be really big on sustainability and this and that. But the US, in particularly in the area that we live in, seems to have a lot more resources when it comes to thrift stores and secondhand shopping. So I'm excited to dig into some of these local thrift stores and see what they have. But I have to be really, really careful because I do have a history of overbuying at the thrift store because I feel like, oh, that is so cool. It's almost like treasure hunting, isn't it? Like you feel like these are treasures that you find and you want to bring them home and show them off. And another trap is that it might be cheaper than if you were buying it new. And so you feel like you can't miss out on this great deal because it's just so cheap. So knowing that this is a weakness of mine, I want to be really, really mindful and intentional with my thrift store shopping. And if I go to the thrift store, I want to have a list and try to stick to the list as much as possible so that I'm only purchasing things that I really need and will use in my home. It's hard, I get it. Like thrift store shopping is just so much fun, but that's something that I'm going to really try to be mindful about going into 2024. Number 20 on this list is soft pillows and mattresses. I don't know what it is, but it is so hard to find hard, firm pillows and mattresses here in the USA. I tried to order some pillows online then they said they were extra firm and I got those and they were so soft. It just gives me such a crank in my neck. I cannot stand soft pillows and soft mattresses. So both the apartment that we were in previously and the apartment we're in now have these really, really soft mattresses. And I just don't sleep as well as I did when we were living in Germany, we had this really beautiful mattress that was like handmade from a local artisan. It's like a lost art. It was such a wonderful mattress. So going into the new year, when we find our home, I'm definitely going to try to be on the hunt for some pillows and mattresses that are like hard, like not soft, I want hard. So if you have any recommendations for me for that, definitely drop them down below and let me know. I even went into a mattress store and I asked the guy, do you have any hard pillows that I can buy from you? And he's like, no, hardly anyone wants hard pillows here. And he couldn't give me any recommendations where to find them. So that's definitely something that I'm on the lookout for in 2024, but no, soft pillows and mattresses for me if I can help it. Number 21 on this list is physical books. And this is something that I've been mindful about for many, many years now, and I'm going to continue to be mindful going into 2024. And I personally have switched to audiobooks because I find that I can read more when I'm listening to books versus trying to sit down and read them. Just because like when I'm washing dishes or folding the laundry, I could have my earphones in and I could be listening to the audiobooks. But for my kids, I do like them to have physical books, but I'm mostly not buying those books, we are going to the library and we're renting the books from the library instead so that you know they can keep in the circulation of books. And I'm putting them over, I have a box in the corner that I'm using for our temporary book storage so that we have like rotating books going in and out of our home. So we've swapped out physical books in favor of audiobooks and books from the library, which has really helped keep book clutter out of our home while still allowing us to keep reading you know, new books and new materials. Number 22 on this list is candles and air fresheners. I have been seeing a lot of stuff in the news and on social media with doctors saying that actually candles and air fresheners are not good for you to use in your home, although they smell nice. They put things in the air like 
parabens and other toxins, which can be really harmful for your lung health in the long run, I guess. I had no idea this was a thing. I've never really been a huge fan of candles and air fresheners, so that's an easy thing for me to say no to in 2024. Number 23 on this list is craft or hobby supplies. Thinking about 2024, it's not necessarily that I have anything against crafting or hobbies, but knowing that we're going to be buying a house and knowing that I have to find stuff to put in that house and decorate it and get us all settled in, I'm not looking to pick up any new crafts or hobbies in 2024. Number 24 on this list of things I'm not buying is coffee. So this is something that my husband and I cut out at the beginning of the year and we decided to challenge ourselves to stop drinking coffee for 30 days and see how we felt. And for him, he still wants to continue drinking the occasional cup of coffee but for me, I found that coffee really, when I stopped drinking it, I felt a lot more focused. My memory improved. I felt a lot less anxious. So I decided to completely cut coffee out from my diet and I've swapped that out with just black tea or green tea or chamomile tea all the teas. It's not like I stopped drinking coffee because I don't like it. I loved coffee. I just don't love what it does to me. And if you want to know more about that and all 10 things that I've cut from my budget that I don't miss at all, make sure to go check out this video or I'll see you next week. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.